the things that are obvious are cars, power plants, waste. That's the obvious stuff. That's the low-hanging fruit. The harder stuff is food, fashion, family planning, buildings, embodied carbon, the stuff that people don't see as obviously connected to pollution. Now, thankfully in cities, I'll come back to cities again here because they're leading in things like circular economy and regenerative fill in the blank, regenerative ag, regenerative economies, et cetera. So we are slowly but surely introducing new models of how to consume in ways that we don't waste. We make use of every piece of the puzzle uh, that we're producing. So thankfully, these new ideas, new languages are circulating again around circular economy, regenerative, fill in the blank, you name it. But if folks want to help out this week on World Environment Day, do get involved with your mm -hmm. city. Do think about what you're eating, what you're wearing, what you're heating with, how you're moving, and help your city in those spaces. Because, again, cities are leading. They are pledging to be carbon neutral by 2025 or net zero by 2030, or they're decarbonizing their buildings by 2030. Your city is most likely, wherever you're watching this, doing some incredible stuff, and they do need your help on World Environment Day and beyond. So there's a lot to do. And, Anand, I appreciate you bringing up different models, different mm -hmm. economic models, because the current one isn't sustainable.